Welcome to the Vintage Time Australia channel and in today's video I'm going to have a shot at uh, installing the barrel arbor jewels on camera. Um, I've had a few requests for this before and, and I've never put it up because I thought that um, people that are a bit unsure how to do it, it was just a great opportunity to get on forums and ask people and get some help with it. But uh, yeah, I keep getting requests for this so I thought I'd have a shot at it and in today's uh, job we're going to look at a 6139 and you can see the plate there now we're just going to inspect how much slop the barrel has on it I mean slop is just such a terrible sounding word isn't it but we're going to give it a shot so there we go so this is just a little bit tricky uh, it's got tons of dry oil on there so it's really gummy as well so just trying to show this is a bit challenging We'll just get it in the right position. But yeah, you can see that there. So you've got uh, you've got uh, shake for days there. That's uh, certainly undesirable. If I just uh, there we go. If I just grab it on there, you can see tons of shake. And you see the other problem is if I just take that plate off you're going to see what issue it's caused on the plate side so you can see in there the, uh, I'll just get a pointer you can see in there the gold ring that's all around there see it on that side as well actually what I'll do if I don't end up throwing it across the room We'll just really bring the light in here. And uh, you can see that ring there. And also there. And you can actually see the step that's worn into the, um, the, arbor, the arbor port there. And that step is what's causing the up and down because it's just got so much wear in it now. If we have a look at the top bushing, it looks okay. Uh, well, you look okay on camera here. But what happens is if you look at it uh, under a loop, you'll see that it is actually ovaled in one direction. So I'm of the opinion that you should replace both at the same time. Uh, the jewel sets are, are not absurdly priced so it's usually worth it just to do that so I'm going to do this video in uh, a few parts and obviously I'm going to stick them all together but uh, yeah you're just going to go see me go to some different uh, scenes so in the first scene what I'm going to do is I'm just going to set up the jeweling tool just to ream that hole out there so that we can push the jewel in and I'll be going over to that now Okay, so the natural lighting I've got in here at the moment is absolutely terrible. So we're into winter now uh, in, in South Australia. And uh, South Australia is one of those places where it's either really hot or really cold. And we're going into the really cold part where there's like no natural light at the moment. So uh, this is my dueling tool here. So I'm just going to sneak it in here. I've just, just to try and avoid sort of too much camera work, I've just... I'm going to try and keep everything at the same focus level. So um, if you're going to, you're going to see this sort of go on some weird angles and stuff. Now I've set up the, um, I've set up the reamer. Now this reamer here is a brand new one. I just bought it from Cousins. So that's the guy there. Now the dueling tool that I'm using is the uh, favorite branded one. And uh, I have both, but I really like using this one. And also my sights tool is on the other side of the country at the moment. So that's why we're using this one today. So you'll notice that the uh, the reamer, the sights reamers are single sided. And they're made out of uh, a bright hardened steel. Now one thing I did notice with these is that um, as you're reaming the hole out, uh, a bit of brass, brass is quite ductile so the brass will stick to the side of the tool because um, as you're reaming it you're actually generating friction and heat and what that does is it melts tiny bits of brass onto the tool 
Now, engraver's brass uh, is quite soft, so uh, because it has quite a lot of lead, well, it doesn't have a lot of lead in it, but it has some lead in it, so it's just going to stick to whatever you've got reaming through there. So the first thing I'm going to do is I can see some little uh, sort of brass rings around on the tool, so I'm just going to shave that off and it comes off quite easily with uh, a scalpel. And the reason I'm doing that is I don't want that to cause sticking when I'm reaming because it just makes the job a lot harder. So we're going to get that off all the surfaces. Now there's multiple ways that you can do this. I just like the scalpel because it's clean and it works and you can it literally takes it off in one pass. So I've now got that tool prepared. Now on the bottom side of the drilling tool You'll see I've got this stump here. Now, while this one looks large, I like this one for a very good reason. And the reason I like this one so much is because it fits exactly in that, in that cutout. Now, I'm just doing this on an angle, so just stuff's falling everywhere. So you can see there, that fits exactly in there. And the bonus of that is is that when I'm reaming, it is going to stop that plate from moving around. Now, I know that some of the expensive brands, uh, for example, Rolex, they actually issue a tool which uh, goes in your lathe and reams the holes exactly straight, but um, we're not going to be working with this today because we're aiming for the people, for example, that have bought these off me from eBay or something like that and have the sights tool. So that's how that goes in. Now that's really important when you're doing, uh, for example, the 6105, because if you look on the 6309, you'll see on the bottom of the plate, we're going to be going through here. It's a nice flat surface to rest on. However, on the 6105, it's got a cut out there. And what that tends to do is that pushes the reamer one direction or another because you've got thicker material on one side. So they're a real problem and um, without sort of having um, having a stump that goes in holds or holds the plate entirely still you're going to have the problem where it will tend to wander to the side and once you've got the hole drilled or reamed um, slightly off then you've stuffed the plate basically. So uh, that's why I like using that one. So that's going to go on the stump there and then we're going to place the reamer in the tool so like that okay now we're going to put the plate in there and I'm before cutting I'm going to make sure that the plate is sitting flat and you can actually feel that so you can't, I, I can rock it a little bit, but I have to force it. And then from there, I'll just see if I can zoom in on this a bit more. Actually, what I might do is I'll just bring up this macro lens. And we'll just get that in focus. just going to put something under this camera. Um, I'm doing this all on the fly so sorry if it's a little bit awkward um, but just bear with me and you'll get the rewards. So I'll just put this under there.
Let's see if that focuses. We'll go a bit more out. Uh, this lens has a set focal length, so it can be a little bit tricky to work with when we're doing what we're doing here. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I've got that all lined up now. I'm sort of happy with how it's sitting. And I'm going to just hold the edges of the plate reasonably lightly. And that will allow me to feel if the plate's moving around as well. And I'm just going to push down slightly and I'm going to start turning the reamer. Now with a new reamer, you'll see, well, you should be able to see on here, it's actually got a nice big bit of swarf coming off. Now if you have a blunt one, you can be doing this all day and they do cut, but they take a while. Now the goal here is not speed, it's to get the hole straight. So we're just going to go at a consistent pace. You can see bits of swarf coming off there. Now one of the reasons I don't like re retrofitting these to, <clears throat> to a movement which has already been serviced is simply because that swarf goes everywhere. So you really want to have the movement clean and not have that stuff all going through all through your gear train and stuff like that. Now these do take a little while to get moving. Finish rough. Oh, so we're just going to keep going on there. And now I can just feel it biting now. And we're nearly down. Just going to keep going. Now, what I, one thing I like to do as well is once you've got a bit of a bite, I like to pull it in and out because you've got to remember the friction and the heat build up will sort of melt bits of brass to the side of the tool and uh, that can make it sticky. So we just like to go. The tool needs to be able to, well, the reamer needs to be able to drop down once you've done the cut. If it's really tight, uh, the jewel will not press in properly. So you can see there now I've got the hole cut. See bits of swarf everywhere. So I'm just going to brush that off and then I'm going to get a countersink which is on the other side of the room. Now. These, that's my countersink there. Now these came with the dueling tool, however you can buy countersinks from Cousins and they're not particularly expensive. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove the burr left over. Now I think the burr is very important to remove. So I'm going to stick the countersinker in there and I mean if, if you just look at how the tool is shaped, you know exactly what it's going to do. So I'm just going to stick the countersinker in there and just cut off the burr. Now we're not looking to have the whole countersunk, we only want the burr removed. And that is good. So we've just got a very light edge on there. You wouldn't want to do more than that. But that's just removed the burr so we now have a flat surface there. And then we're going to turn it over and do the other side. Now the other side often I do like to put a little bit of a countersink on because it's not as critical as the train side. And it just looks neater. We don't need much. There we go. So that's now slightly countersunk. I'll just flip it over again just so we can see the other side again. And that side we're simply deburring. That's all we're 
what we're doing. I didn't actually have it in the holder properly. But, yeah, so we just deburred there and that's it. Now, if you don't remove the burr, you can risk cracking the jewels when pushing them in. So, I think it's quite important. I don't think the, um, the countersinks are even that expensive to buy. I think they're like at $12 US or something. All right, so now we're going to move on to pressing the jewels in and also removing the top plate bush. And I'm just going to go to another scene again. All right, let me just get this adjusted. Okay, so we're going to set up the tool a bit differently now. So we've taken the reamer out. And now we're going to get the uh, sprung uh, pump pusher. Which is different to the pump pushers that go on the end there. Now I'm going to put in the 195 flat pusher. So it's uh, 1.95 mil. Sorry, no, this is a 2.25 mil. So the 225, and that's going to go in there. Now we've still got that stump in there because that's going to work for what we want to do. So that goes in there. Now we just need to make sure that uh, we haven't limited it by using the micrometer there or anything. It can go all the way down. Now we're going to get the handle. Is that guy there? It's going to go in like that. I mean, this is pretty straightforward how the machine works. Now we're just going to put in the top plate, and we're just going to push the uh, push that uh, bush out. Done. So now what we're going to do is while we're set up to do this job, I'm going to take this out. I'm going to change this flat pusher for a larger flat pusher. Just that guy there. It's going to go in. It's going to go in there. And this is going to get changed out for a flat one. Can see what that's going to do and now I'm going to put the, the handle back on. Now I found with the handles you only really need to touch the very end of the handle. Um, you've got more control over it from there and obviously more leverage. So trying to crank it from the... Uh, so what I mean is I only operate it from here not from up here. So you've got much more control and fine movement. You see there I can move it very small amounts. Whereas here, no matter how much you press on it, it's going to move uh, quite a lot, which when you're trying to do this fine work isn't really doesn't really work for you. So this is just one of those things that you learn over time on uh, how to control the tools and um, as you get better with it you figure out what's the best way of doing this, how do I do this without breaking things and how do I have more control over the tool. So the first one that we're going to put in is the, uh, is the top uh, arbor jewel. Now if I remember where I put that plate Oh, there it is. Okay, so what I'm going to do, I'm just going to put the macro back on. And just get it in focus. Now, I'm not a professional cameraman, so it's not really my goal here. And that just simply isn't going to focus. So what we're going to do is I'm going to bring the plate to you. So now we've got a hole there. <clears throat> and I'm going to put the arbor jewel in. Now <clears throat> these top ones have one side that's slightly flatter. Uh, really it doesn't matter too much. 
So I'm just going to line that up and try to just get it to sit in the hole. So it's kind of sitting uh, parallel with the plate. Then we're going to bring it over. And uh, once again here, speed is not really what we're trying to achieve. So we're trying to achieve precision and not to break things. So I'm going to put it in. And I'm going to bring the tool down. And see there, I've kind of got it on a bit of an angle. I want to sit the tool so it flattens everything. So it sits flat and I can feel that with my fingers. So I can feel if it's moving around or if it's slightly wonky. And then I'm just going to gently push down. And I'm just going to give it another very light push. Now I'm barely even moving my finger here and the part is going in. And that's really what you want to aim for. And now that is in. So I'll just see if I can change the lighting here a smidge. There you go. So that is now pressed in. And we want to achieve, what we want to achieve is to have it flush against the plate. And you can feel that actually with your fingernail. Uh, so people underestimate how sensitive your fingernail is, but it can, I think, statistics show it can feel up to, I think, about 0.1, no, it's less than that actually, it's about 0.01 millimeter, something like that. So I'm sure someone will correct me in the comments somewhere if I've said something ridiculous, but you can sort of feel that that's flush. And I know it's flush because the way I pushed it in, the stake uh, overran the uh, sides of the jewel. So what was stopping it was the the sides of the plate here. So it can't go any lower than that. And that's what we want to achieve. So that one's done. Now, going on to the other side, I'm just going to use the same setup. And we'll just get that to, so we can see what we're doing. Okay. Alright, so now we're going to do a repeat process of what we just did with the top. And we're going to just line up the bottom jewel so it's parallel with the base of the, well, on the top of the plate really. Um, and that way when we push it down, so just... Um, yeah, so that way when we push it down, we're sort of minimizing the chance it's going to go sideways. Just trying to get that as flat as possible in relation to the plate itself. Now, these do have one side that's slightly flatter, but again, it doesn't really matter too much. I didn't design these to have a really deep oil sink and the reason I did that is because I designed the jewels to be thicker rather than thinner just to reduce the chance that you can break them when pushing them in. These lower ones are reasonably easy to break so when I designed these these are 0.1mm thicker than the original part and uh, they also have a, sm a sh uh, basically no oil sink. Um, they don't really need much of an oil sink anyway, but uh, it just ended up meaning that there was more thickness in the wall of the part, which reduces the chance that you're going to break it. So now I'm going to do it from this end, and the reason I'm going to do it from this end is because when I press it down, again, it's going to get the jewel flush to the plate, which is what we're trying to achieve. And again, I'm just going to, I can feel if that's off. Um, if the plate sort of tilted one way or the other, because we don't really want that, that's going to push the jewel in sideways. So now I know I have it in, and I'm going to lightly press the jewel, and that's in.
Now we really don't want much force here, which is why I suggest you use the very end of the um, the lever because you just use the leverage to your advantage and that is pressed in and that's how you do these so uh, if anyone's got any questions feel free to put them in the comments but they're fairly easy to do as long as you've got the right tools and that solves that wear problem forever on these movements alright thanks for watching and uh, feel free to check out the eBay auctions where I've got them for sale and I hope to see you again soon.